Come on into the ditch. I'm your resident ditch witch, Tara Tyne, and we're about to get witchy. Whether you like it or not. So 2023 is quite a historic year for Ireland in that it's the first year we'll be having a national holiday in February to honour one of our three patron saints, Saint slash Goddess Bridget. <sighs> Another lovely day of standing in a field and minding my own business. Since Bridget's popularity as a symbol of the determined and trickstery feminine has been steadily rising in recent years, the Irish government have decided that it looks bad to have a national day of celebration for a male saint who wasn't even born here. Jesus and not to have one for the Irish born and bred bona fide badass that represents a large portion of their voter demographic, probably. I don't know. But anyway, Bridget is still actively worshipped in both her guises as saint and pagan goddess in modern Ireland. There are a number of traditions by which people venerate her even today, the most popular being the St. Bridget's Cross. Made from rushes and believed by Catholics to have been the method she used to teach Christianity to the poor heathens of 5th century Ireland. But you don't have to be Christian to celebrate Bridget's Cross as a symbol of protection for the house it hangs in. And honestly, using handmade symbols to magically protect one's home from harm seems a bit more pagan than Catholic to me. Hmm. So I thought today I could show you how to make a cross of your very own. If you don't have access to nice flexible reeds like the ones we use, don't worry, you can still make one out of grass or any other bendable species really. You can also use florist's wire or pipe cleaners. It's not like Bridget's gonna appear in a puff of smoke and smite you. Reeds just happen to be what's seasonal in Ireland at in bulk. But if you are going to use reeds or another wild species, here are some general tips for safely and successfully gathering them whilst honouring Bridget herself in her temple, the Boglands. If you're going to be then in random fields picking things, it's not a bad idea to seek permission from the landowner before entering. If there's a no trespassing sign, it's best not to chance it because it may indicate a safety issue. Okay, the real world landowners know you're there, but do the other crowd. Checking for fairy trees or other sacred sites on the land before you enter is always advised. If you do spot a suspicious looking feature, it's probably best to just look for another field. If the coast is clear, but you want to be sure you don't cross any potential entities, well, pouring out a small bottle of high quality cream is usually a safe bet. Imbulg, or St Bridget's Day, coincides with lambing season in Ireland, so if you want to avoid a swift hoof to the hole on behalf of some very protective mammies, then avoid any fields with livestock in them. Not to mention that it would quite possibly be an affront to the deity you're meant to be honouring. Bridget doesn't like people annoying the wee lambs. Reeds like to grow in boggy land and bogs often have hard to spot holes between sods where you could easily lose your boot or worse. They can be hard to spot so bringing a stick to test the ground in unfamiliar boggy terrain is always advisable. Use a clean, sharp and sterile blade. This is always good practice when cutting any species of flora, it decreases the risk of disease and damage to the plant, which is the very least we can do. Try to minimise your impact on the place you're cutting from by not taking too much grass or dead reeds with you. Dead stems help to fertilise and grow the soil, and grass is home to many various ecosystems which are necessary to healthy land. If we take care of the land, the land takes care of us. And at Imbulg, isn't that really what it's all about? Okay, so you've got your reeds, you'll also need some string or yarn and a pair of scissors. And here's how we do it. We take our first reed, we take our second reed, and all we're doing is bending the second reed around the first one like that then take a third reed and bend it over the two arms of the reed that you've just folded so you end up getting this kind of a pattern going on then take a fourth reed bend it around your third reed it's coming together quite nicely now. The tricky part is kind of holding it all together. Take a fifth reed, bend it around the fourth one. So you can see you're kind of heading clockwise on this the whole time. And that will start to appear in the pattern you're making when it now in just a moment. So now we're back around to the start at the first reed and we just keep going. We're just doing 
our best to kind of tighten this up before we tie it. I am fast losing control of the shape of it here. <laughs> and then I'm using some yarn, literally the first one that came to hand. Ah! Yeah, I should probably start by tying the arm that I last wove, but you know, I'm not that organized. So what I've done there is just tied a single knot, then pull it really tight, wrap again, tie another single knot, pull it tight, wrap again, and then you can tie a double knot behind. Hopefully you can tie a double knot behind with more success than me. Repeat with all four arms until you end up with something like this. Trim each of the arms. And then lastly, trim your threads. Make sure not to cut too close to the knot. And most importantly, leave one of them long with a double knot for hanging your cross up. And there we have it, our St. Bridget's Cross. So I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial in how to make a St. Bridget's Cross in the most common style that they're made here in Ireland. But it's important to note as well that there is quite a bit of variation between regions on how a St. Bridget's Cross is made. And if you care to click on this link, you will see one that was made especially for me by a man who reckons the style is called the Tyrone style. So maybe those of you who are watching this in County Tyrone or who are from County Tyrone can let me know whether or not that's actually a style that you've seen around your area. And if you've already made this simple form of the St. Bridges Cross that we did here today, you might want to challenge yourself and give it a go. It's just a bit of a twist on the original, literally. It gives it a nice twisted pattern when you have it all finished and you flip it over. It's pretty cool. And for those of you who, for whatever reason, are completely unable to make a St. Bridges Cross or would rather just buy one, well, might I suggest that you start by supporting a fantastic Irish creator, the Gubbon himself, Tom King, known as the blacksmith who is strongly associated with the mythical Ireland community run by Anthony Murphy. Tom has actually recently just won an award for this product that he has created. These forged St. Bridget's crosses, and I mean like forged in a forge, not fake. They're, they're not fake. These are perfectly nice decorative St. Bridget's crosses, so if you'd like to purchase one of those, hang up in your home and keep it safe all year round, I will leave the link for those in the description below. And one last thing to plug before I close out this video is that details on my upcoming Herbs and Herbal Magic course with the Irish Pagan School are going to be released very, very soon. I teach all things fundamental to herbs and herbal magic in Ireland throughout our history. Starting from the earliest mentions of them in our mythological text, to the treatment of herbs under Ireland's Brehan laws, right up until the witches of the 17th, 19th centuries, and on into the 20th century, right up until today. So if you would like to know everything about the practices of herbalism and herbal magic, in Ireland, then get on over to the Irish Pagan School, sign up to the mailing list, or alternatively, just stay tuned to my videos for more details on that class when they arrive. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more fun and witchy adventures. I happen to know that approximately two thirds of you watching my videos are not actually subscribed. Look, at it doesn't cost anything, but it does help my channel out something serious. So just scroll down to below this video, hit the subscribe button, and that will be much appreciated by me and you will get updates every time I upload a video. I upload most Thursdays and you're not going to want to miss it. Sláin agus bánach, goodbye and good luck to you.